Well, thank you all for uh, attending my talk after lunch, and so hopefully you can wake everyone back up. Um, I, before I get started, I wanted to thank the organizers for giving us the opportunity to present in sunny California. My name is Sean Kevley, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Nanite, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing in delivery. <clears throat> so we firmly believe that gene delivery is really the final frontier in gene therapies. I'd argue that if you don't have effective delivery, you don't have an effective therapeutic, full stop. And this is really the problem to solve at the end of the day. And this is what Nanite and my colleagues are aiming to solve, is truly breaking open and solving the delivery problem. <clears throat> Delivery still remains to be the largest bottleneck in gene therapies. You talk to Nobel laureates, like everyone I'm sure saw, Katie Carrico and Drew Weissman just win the Nobel Prize, to your colleagues in, various, uh, in, in your gene therapy companies, and you ask them the biggest issue, and it's delivery, delivery, and delivery. Now there's two worlds with the delivery. There is the viral world and the non-viral world, and I'd argue if we didn't have COVID happen, we'd still very much be in the viral world. Um, and while viruses like adeno-associated viruses and other viral modalities have advanced much of gene therapies, there's still some significant limitations within this space as it relates to safety, costs. One of our most expensive drugs on the market in gene therapy is about $3 million today because 70% of the cost is manufacturing. And the limit, limited amount that you can actually be able to redose. That means that any sort of transient-based therapeutics are not amenable to using viral means um, as, a, as, a, as a potential vector. So now fast forward. We did something pretty extraordinary during COVID. We took a relatively brand new modality, mRNA, squeezed it down from, what I'd argue, about 10 years down to 12 months into a novel vaccine. And one of the big unsung heroes within that vaccine is not so much the mRNA, but actually the thing that goes around the mRNA, which is the nanoparticle. This allowed us to actually really crack open the space with the non-viral delivery, increasing cargo size, reducibility, inexpensive to manufacture at scale, as we all saw, and biodegradable with relatively low toxicity. But we need, need, need more non-viral delivery technologies to help propel the gene therapy market. So this is what we really got excited about. <clears throat> so we believe that the next frontier of non-viral is programmable polymers. Now in comparison to like the lipid world, which is a relatively, from a chemical space, a relatively small sandbox, polymer nanoparticles actually offers a breadth of opportunity due to its expansive chemical features. And with those expansive chemical features, you can actually tune them to be resorbable and safe, bioresorbable, bioclevable, <clears throat> play with the release kinetics, tunable, modular, you can click on things, scalable manufacturing, and I think if everyone probably remembered in the middle of launching the COVID-19 vaccine when there was a, a run on minus 80 freezers, um, these actually can be formulated to be thermally stable, unlike, un, unlike lipids. Now while there's a lot of advantages within polymer space, they've been notoriously difficult to understand. And this is really what got us super excited with a nanite, is that difficult to understand problem on actually advancing polymer nanoparticles. And so as we got together, we set out as a mission with a nanite to decode polymer delivery and to take, really turn this into an engineering problem, being able to synthesize at high throughput many distinct polymer nanoparticles, intersect them in biological systems, generate a huge corpus of data, allowing us to then use and apply latest generative AI and machine learning models to actually correlate what chemical features are driving a biological output, and then allow us to figure out the quote unquote rules of designing these. And then allowing us to design bespoke delivery vehicles for particular applications. And so we set on a mission to decode polymer delivery and we built a platform called Sayer. And that platform intersects two critical uh, pieces of technology that we developed. The first is AI polymer design. So what we did is we've ingested millions and millions of chemical features from literature and synthesized our own monomers to construct varying different polymers and chemical diversity in different architectures. 
and then complemented that and complex that with varying cargos. That's ASOs, mRNA, plasma DNA. And then we took a first principles approach to look at how do we develop high throughput assays to characterize binding, degrees of binding to these particular cargos and polymers, the size of these polymer nanoparticles, get rough cuts in terms of viability and in vitro assays, expression, uh, and really where the rubber meets the road is what we developed in multiplexing in vivo. And so as anyone might know within computation, it's cost per data point, throughput, and the amount of data you can generate. The, the down, downstream and the bio, biology side, your limiting step is typically in vivo. And so we spent a lot of time here making sure that we can actually be able to take multiple distinct polymer nanoparticles, pool them together, bring them into one animal experiment, and extract multi, a, a huge corpus of data to tell us what polymers are going where and what chemical features are driving that trafficking tropism, and generate really interesting predictive models that allows us to predict what chemical features drive to particular organs in animal models. So let me walk you through that. So we're very focused in exopatic design of delivery vehicles. And so in other words, clearing the liver. One of the biggest challenges within the lipid world is lipids naturally t target liver. Polymers, not so much, and we can actually design around that quite a bit. So to walk you through it, we look at first principles first and characterize a simple question, does a polymer bind to a particular cargo and what degrees of that polymer bind? Then multiplex in vivo. It allows us to get an understanding on where these polymer nanoparticles are going, where they're trafficking, and what sort of expression that they have. Then we can actually double click on certain organs of interest they're interested in, in this case the lung. We use a probabilistic model to then down select certain candidates that are targeting the lung. And then what we do is called closed loop refinement, right? So we refine in a closed loop to drive specific targeting to the lung in this case and develop new and never synthesized polymer nanoparticles. So let me show you what the result of that is. So this was a collaboration that we've um, started with the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. So when we, when we got together with the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, we had a couple polymers, maybe 10 to 20 times, more specific to the lung. And then through closed loop optimization through our platform, we're able to drive specificity of novel polymer compositions, polymer nanoparticles, to 5,000 times more specific to the lung over any other organ. And this is not through nebulization or direct injection to the lung. This is a, this is a systemic injection to the lung. And so you can understand the power that machine learning and computation can actually gain insights on really what chemical features drive to particular organs and be able to refine that. The next step of this project is actually moving more towards mRNA to express CFTR to restore function uh, eventually in cystic fibrosis patients in the future. Uh, but this is something that we're very, very excited about. <clears throat> so we took this a step further and looked at other organs too. So not just the lung. So we have a uh, partnership with the Charcot Marie Tooth Disease Foundation. Um, for those who don't know what Charcot Marie Tooth Disease is, it's uh, or CMT1A. It affects one in every 2,500 people annually. Uh, it's resulting of a overexpression of a protein in the sciatic nerve called PMP22. Um, that's native, uh, and I would say in in a non-diseased person. Uh, you, would ha you have PMP22, so it's really tricky when you have an overexpression of PMP22. But there's not a lot of interventions for uh, CMT1A. So we collaborate with the CMT Foundation to build delivery vehicles that would go towards the sciatic nerve, and specifically Schwann cells. And in this case, we're using a different cargo, um, antisense illegal nucleotides, to knock down PMP22. And we looked at uh, developing polymer nanoparticles across uh, two different doses, two micrograms and five micrograms of ASOs, and as you can see on the figure on the right, so the controls are um, essentially on the flanking ends of the graphs, and in the middle are actually novel polymers that we've discovered that actually knocks down PMP22 uh, to a, uh, I would say, a, a, an expression level that's <clears throat> more, more akin to a kind of wild type of what you would normally express PMP22. And we're continuing this work uh, and advancing this work forward to more uh, in vivo validation, which we're really, really excited about. Lastly, 
Um, we're just kicked off a program uh, focused on uh, spleen delivery and specifically to T cells. And so this is early days, uh, but through, and we just kicked this up project off a couple of weeks ago, or well, actually a few weeks ago, and we're already seeing polymer candidates generating anywhere from three to six times specificity to the spleen, and we're seeing these actually correlate to actually T cell transfection. Uh, this is something that we're also very excited about, which is a huge opportunity and a future opportunity on in vivo CAR-T applications uh, that we're looking to explore, too. <clears throat> so our, our business, uh, in a nutshell, is what we call is DAS, which is Delivery as a Service. And so we work with um, biotech companies with varying different cargos. Uh, we've been focused mostly on transient-based systems. Um, such as circular RNA, ASOs, mRNA, RNAi. Uh, and we work closely with partners that uh, focus, that actually need delivery and specific delivery with their cargo of interest. Uh, as I presented, you know, our tissues of interest are across lung, nerve, and immune, but we're bringing on new tissues online. And our Sayer platform is constantly screening outside of this, uh, these tissue regimes, including kidney, heart, uh, and others as well. And as I mentioned before, we work with not only gene therapy companies, but also clinical and patient advocacy groups uh, that lack delivery vehicles and, and build essentially delivery vehicles for um, those particular relationships. Couldn't do this without my management team. Um, and myself, Thomas, and Shashi have been in the space for quite some time. Um, and we're always really interested in the intersection of biology, co chemistry, and computation. Uh, we've been uh, in aggregate about 50 years in, in polymer-based products, ranging from tools to uh, therapeutics. And um, <clears throat> we're really, really excited about the space with applying material science to this really, really interesting problem. And uh, join with me by, uh, with my head of machine learning, Felipe, who's one of the very few people that understand how to apply computational methods to chemistry and to biology. Uh, we're exp expanding quite a bit within Boston. Uh, we have a great team at the intersection of uh, machine learning, biology, and polymer chemistry, uh, right next to the convention center, um, and it built a state-of-the-art lab to do not only, obviously, computational work, but high-throughput screening, synthesis, uh, biology, and, um, and as well as formulation work. <clears throat> and that's all I have. Happy to answer any questions um, after the talk, but thank you again for uh, listening. <laughs>